We all know about food and how important nutrition is. And we, you know, we talk about sleep and things like that, but water, which really makes up the vast majority of our cells is uh, pretty often overlooked. And as deuterium gets incorporated into our bodies, it starts to build up more and more over time. And that is what I believe we see as aging. And because deuterium is so heavy, when it's next to, when it's attached to the hydrogen in your DNA, it'll start to put pressure on the DNA to crack and warp and, and cause mutations. So deuterium at a lot of different levels is very important because it damages our body. But the most important part of why we want very little deuterium in our bodies is that it destroys the mitochondria. So as this water comes out of your mitochondria, this is the zone that your body really loves because it starts to make these different um, chemicals in that area in the mitochondria because it's a deuterium free zone or a really low deuterium zone. Welcome to the Live Damn Well podcast. My name is Jorge Roman and my guest today is Dr. Joel Gould, a repeat guest, a Canadian dentist with over 30 years of experience in both the US and Canada. After struggling with Crohn's disease for most of his life and being told by doctors there was nothing he could do, he slowly stumbled across the solutions. Since then, Dr. Gould successfully reversed Crohn's disease and now works to raise awareness for ancestral living in a modern world through his platform, Modern Hunter Gathers. Welcome back to the podcast. Thank you. How's it going? Happy Great. to be here. <clears throat> so today we're really going to focus on water, which is something that I think is uh, pretty often overlooked. Um, I mean, we all know about food, and how important nutrition is, and we, you know, we talk about sleep and things like that. But water, which really makes up, uh, you know, the vast majority of our cells, is uh, is often overlooked. And I'm actually going to have um, Dr. Pollock on on the podcast soon, so that's going to be really exciting. Great. So. Great. To start off, most people know that it comes in three forms, right? Solid, liquid, and gas. But there's actually a fourth phase that's now been characterized. Uh, it's known as structured water or exclusion zone water, easy water. So I want to talk about what this is and why it's even relevant for health. Right. Well, it's a, it's a great introduction. So for some people who have never heard of Gerald Pollack or understand what structured water is, this is information that's kind of not really out there. And there's a lot of different reasons. Um, when people think of water and hydration, they really think about, you know, well, I need to bring a, a bottle of water with me so I keep flushing my body with water. And the idea that we need to constantly drink water is one of the first of a couple of things that I want to, you know, uh, break into people's understanding that it's not necessarily true. And, you know, one of my, my quotes is just because everybody believes something that doesn't make it true. Um, water is important, but we don't need to really be constantly drinking water because humans make our own water. So that's kind of a, a very different topic, but the, the structure of water itself is really interesting. And, and I kind of maybe want to slow you down, um, before we get into what structured water is, is really break it down to what, what's the big deal with water? Why is water make up, I don't know if it's 60% of our body or 80% of our body. Um, it's, it's, you know, this is, I, I don't have my stats on hand, but the really the the most interesting thing about water and i really wanted to talk about this as the foundation to life because without understanding what water is and and how it behaves and what what is it about it that we need to understand when it comes to our biology is that um it, we have to learn just a little bit of you know chemistry and physics and without that information i don't think a lot of this is going to make sense so structured water is actually kind of easy to think about because it's really the, the fourth phase of water. And you're exactly right. So ice is solid. Um, steam is vapor is, um, is another form of water, uh, the water they're used to drinking. But um, because of the structure of water and how the actual molecule is made, we have a fourth phase of water that has to do with when water molecules all line up. So I think it's, um, this is, you know, some foundational information because every single thing forward in your biology relates to the structure of water. And I know that might not seem like it's possible or a big deal, but it, it really is. So the first thing I want to just sort of clarify for people is that we have atoms and we have hydrogen is an atom. This is now we have oxygen, which is an atom. And when we combine them, we get a molecule. So water is a molecule. It is H2O is two hydrogen atoms attached to an oxygen atom. And that's the most important part because when you look at a water molecule, it's bent. And that's the way the structure of the universe is. And it has to do with how the different atoms 
have availability to bond with other atoms. And water is a really, really easy one because oxygen is a trouble molecule. It's missing two electrons and it's always looking for those electrons. Um, so oxygen is kind of dangerous because it's, it's always oxidizing everything. But water is a nice stable molecule because it's one oxygen with two hydrogens. And that molecule is very, I like to say it's happy because it's stable. You don't, you're not going to get a free radical from water unless you have some radiation hitting that water molecule and getting rid of one of those hydrogens, then you have a free radical that's really looking for an extra electron. So because the, the, the molecule is, is a little unusual, it's bent, you have oxygens in the middle and you have your hydrogens on the outside. And um, the basics of physics is that um, electrons, there's electrons, protons, and neutrons. Those are all of our subatomic particles. I think we talked about that last time um, on your other podcast. And um, uh, oxygen will pull the electrons closer towards it from the hydrogens because the electrons orbit in a cloud. They don't orbit like a planet does. We like to think of it as, a, as where th this thing is buzzing everywhere. It's filling all the space. But that oxygen um, will pull, because it's a bigger atom, the gravity will pull the electrons and they'll st spend more time circling around the oxygen which will make that oxygen atom more negative. And that will leave the hydrogens that are sticking out on the ends more positive. So now we have something called a polar molecule. And this is the key to all life, because if this molecule was perfectly balanced, it wouldn't it would be nothing exciting about it because it wouldn't have any uh, ability to do anything. It'd be kind of like we talked about, I think before, like a flat line. So that bend in the, in the, in the molecule of oxygen and the actual quantum physics idea that it's got um, the, the oxygen is partially negative and the hydrogen is partially positive. This is something that, that um, students of chemistry and organic chemistry know all about. Um, and this is basically like a relative positivity or negativity. So why this is important is because when you get a bunch of water molecules together, this is a very small molecule. And so a lot of them will stack up. Um, water is, is just really interesting because just left on its own, um, we call it bulk water. But as these oxygen molecules start to connect together, we have the positive charge of the hydrogen or slightly positive charge of the hydrogen it interacts with the slightly negative charge of the oxygen. And then it actually starts to all bond together one on top of the other. And it actually makes sheets in three dimensions. It's really cool. I kind of have this one graphic where I think it would make great wallpaper. Um, and so this structured water is very different than bulk water because the water starts to really form in sheets. And the thickness of the sheets depends on some interesting stuff. So this structured water will form really around any hydrophilic areas. And so I just want to talk briefly, I think we talked about it last time as well, about hydrophilic and hydrophobic. So um, I like to break things down into the easiest way to remember them. And I have these cartoon characters that I always like to throw out there. And I have a character called Kathy Cholesterol. And she's fat. And fat is very hydrophobic, terrified of water. So Kathy is terrified of water. She's hydrophobic. Now, she has a friend. Her name is, uh, his name is Sulphur. And Sulphur is very, very hydrophilic. And Sulphur loves water. And what makes these different... Um, atoms be more positive or more negative has to do with how many electrons they carry. Sulfur is carrying more electrons. It's going to have a more negative charge and it's going to be able to draw water molecules to it because that negative charge is going to draw the, pot, the partially positive um, uh, charge of the hydrogen. And so you're going to get this structured water is going to start to form anywhere where there's a really good amount of um, hydrophil hydrophilicity. So and that just so happens to be our proteins and, and all of the structures of our body, our collagen, and our, our basically the way proteins are, these are really perfect sites um, for this negative charge and for water to start to build up around it. So um, the actual function or what, what structured water is, is this is just simply the way this molecule behaves on this planet and in this universe. And with no energy input whatsoever, water will just be bulk. And it does have 
um, its own vibrational energy, which we talked about last time. So if you put a bucket of water down and you put um, and you let it sit, it's gonna it's gonna basically um, uh, sort of get to equilibrium. So whatever is uh, suspended in that water is just gonna be sitting there and evenly spaced out because of osmosis, because of just the resonation of water. But if you apply energy to that water, the energy itself will start to actually structure the water and start to form those different layers of sheets. And the more energy you put in to that water, the thicker that um, 